Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim today we will start the book which is written it's authored by our murshid our teacher our sheikh hazrat maulana yusuf mutala hafizahullah one of the beloved khalifas of hazrat sheikh rahmatullah alayhi majma'in the name of the book is buzurgo ke wisal ke ahwal buzurgo ke wisal ke ahwal final moments of the pious a human being's salvation hazrat says hafizahullah a human being's najat and salvation depends on his hal and state at the time of death he will enjoy eternal comfort should he be blessed with the gift of a virtuous end which is known as al husnul khatima otherwise he will taste boundless punishment it is for this reason that the noble prophets and the pious servants of the muslim ummah constantly feared allah's attribute of as samad as samad the independent they feared allah's attribute of being as samad as samad beniyaz independent contemplating as to the state in which their souls will be extracted at the time of death the character of the pious alama abdul wahab sharani alayhi rahma writes in ahwalu sadiqin that to fear allah given one a bad death that will constantly veil him from him in the fire of jahannam is one of the qualities of the pious they always fear that a bad ending to fear allah given one a bad death that will consequently veil him from allah in the fire of jahannam this is one of the qualities of the pious the salihin says allama abdul wahab asharani ali rahma some of them used to remain so immersed in this anxiety that they didn't even realize who was sitting near them whenever hasan al basri rahimahullah heard the hadith which informs that the last person to leave jahannam will do so after 1000 years he would say i wish for myself to be that person he was asked why do you wish for this he replied you know what will he not leave at some point he's going to do so after 1000 years the hadith says the last person to leave jahannam will do so after some 1000 years he says will he not leave the hell at least after some point i wish for this in other words there will undoubtedly be those who will forever remain in jahannam whereas this person is better than them better than them and there is a chance of being one of them this person is better than them and there is a chance of me being one of them something i dislike that is why i pray for myself not to be amongst those who will remain there in forever but to be from those who will one day depart from jahannam even if that person is the very last one to leave he will at least be safe from this ordeal sufyan asauri ali rahma would say whoever becomes content on his religion and feels yes that's it i have it now and satisfied with his deen 
Allah will make him taste the repercussions of this fearlessness. Imam Abu Hanifa alayhi rahma used to say, Iman of most people is seized at the time of death. This is because shaitan digs deep. He digs deep and thus totally uses up his strength to lead astray. Very few survive his tricks. Allahumma hafadna minhu. Allahumma hafadna minhu. Says Imam Abu Hanifa. Alayhi rahma. That iman of most people is seized at the time of death. Because shaitan digs very deep at this time. And thus totally uses up his strength to lead astray. Very few survive his tricks. Allahumma hafadna minhu. Ameen. Astonishment of the angels. Bishr al-Hafi. Ali Rahma says, When the angels ascend the skies with the soul, with the ruh of a mu'min who died as a Muslim, they say in astonishment, How? How did he escape the deception of the world? Rabbi Ibn al Quthaym Ali Rahma says, The soul of a person exits in the state that used to be the predominant state before that. To support this point, Rabbi Ibnul Kuthaim mentions a story. I visited someone experiencing the pangs of death. Whenever I would instruct him to repeat, La ilaha illallah, he would begin to calculate the amounts of money in his debtors, his, his debtors had owed him. He will calculate the amount of money his debtors owed him and so forth. Mutrif ibn Abdullah Ali Rahma says, I do not feel astonished at those who end up being spiritually destroyed. But I feel astonished at those who slipped the net and survived at the time of death. As it is not difficult, it's not difficult to lose Iman whilst living in this world, it's not difficult, but it is difficult to safeguard it. Therefore, the biggest, the biggest ni'mat and the biggest gift from Allah Ta'ala is one. The biggest gift from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to one is to be granted death on Islam to be granted al-husn al-qatima. Death on Iman is a big, big ni'mat, a big blessing. Zaid ibn Aslam, radiallahu anhu, used to say, if death were in my hands whilst making Islam my friend, I would have caused my lower self, my nafs, to taste the flavor of death. It is not in my hands Hence, I am helpless. Sufyan al cried so much on one occasion that he fainted. A servant asked him the cause of it. He said, we used to lament our sins before, but now we cry on the thought of whether or not our Islam will be safeguarded. He used to say at times, a person is worshipping idols, but he is destined to be from the auspicious in Allah Ta'ala's ilm. And then there is that individual who seems to be very obedient to him, but he is destined to be from the wretched in Allah's ilm. The hadith states how many people strive for Jannah to the extent that remaining between them and paradise is only the distance of a hand span. Yet, whatever Allah Ta'ala has predetermined, dictates in such a way that he abandons the deeds sent to him into Jannah for those that lead to Jahannam. Benefits of worrying about the Akira. Yahya ibn Ma'ad, alayhi rahma, used to say, both cogitation and taking heed causes astonishing wisdoms to emanate 
from the treasures of the heart of a believer. A person then hears talk from him that the sages approve of. Taking heed causes wisdoms to emanate from the treasures of the heart of a mu'min. A person then hears talk from him that the sages approve of, before which the scholars lower their heads. Jurists display amazement, and the literalists hasten towards, eager to learn. And it all starts with Marifa, taking heed, paying attention. Sufyan Thawri, Ali Rahma says, fear and sorrow, fear and sorrow in a believer is according to his nur of foresight. Fear and sorrow in a believer is according to his light and his nur of foresight. Could leave the mic alone. The mic song is all right. It's disturbing every time you interfere with it. Fear and sorrow in a believer is according to his nur of his foresight. His fear and sorrow will be to the extent to which he possesses this light of foresight. Muhammad ibn al-Wasil's face, due to the intensity of his sadness, would look like that of the mother who had lost a child. Its effect was such that the harshness of the heart of anyone seeing him in that state would transfer into gentleness. He would advise one ought to seek companionship or take as their sheikh that individual who at first look before any words are shared comes across as someone who is more advanced in deen than him. Wahhab ibn al-Ward Rahma would say Allah via revelation told Sayyiduna Ibrahim ala nabina wa alayhi salatu wa salam Wash your heart. Ibrahim alayhi salam asked to Allah, how can I achieve that as the water cannot reach it? The command arrived. The heart is not washed with water, but the heart is washed with grief and sorrow. Grief and sorrow. You should express extreme grief, sadness and sorrow on things from me which you have not fulfilled or have fear of not fulfilling in the future, and with it, wash your heart. Wash your heart and burn it. Express extreme grief, sadness and sorrow on things from me which you have not fulfilled, or have fear of not fulfilling in the future. And with this extreme grief, sadness and sorrow, wash your heart and burn it. Ibrahim ibn Adham, Ali Rahma would say, just as the source of bodily illness is bodily disease, similarly the origin of the ailments of the heart is sin. Allah has provided a remedy for every malady. And that is why he has created remedies for the ailments of the heart too. They are sorrow and melancholy, melancholiness. When one becomes despondent and sad due to his sins, his tears will be transferred from his eyes to his heart, whereby he will lament through his heart rather than his eyes, which will lead to his spirits being raised and good health of the heart will return. Your beard has turned white, why don't you apply henna? Someone asked him. Ibrahim ibn Adham replied, Applying the henna would be considered adornment, whereas we are in a state of mourning, morning, night and day. What has adornment got in common with mourning? This patient of love ensure he does not become cured. Ensure he doesn't become cured, this patient of love. Bishr ibn al-Haris, Ali Rahma, was asked, 
Why is it that you, we see in you a constant state of sadness? He replied, I am someone for whom the king has issued an arrest warrant concerning claims of government and non-governmental matters. He has as yet not called me to answer. Hence, he fears as to what would be the outcome of the many charges against him. And it is therefore necessary for him to remain sad and remorseful. He would also say, every affliction sooner or later ends. Other than that, cause my sins. Every affliction sooner or later ends other than that caused by sins, which is revived on every breath taken. The cause of sorrow brought upon one by other perpetrations eventually ends or becomes a distant memory, resulting in the sorrow to end as well. Whereas the sadness caused by sin, its cause grows in strength as time elapses. This is because death and its trail is getting nearer all the time, thus making it necessary for it to grow on every breath drawn in. Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib karramallahu wajha would cry and lament, beasts, birds and fish will find tranquility after they die. But I will not find tranquility even after I die. I will be imprisoned due to my deeds instead. Call of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Hatim ibn al-Jalil's practice, Ali Rahma, was such that when everyone would rejoice, he on the day of Eid would assemble his wider family and sit and weep together. Someone asked him, why is it that the whole world rejoices on Eid? But you weep. He replied, I am a servant of Allah who has been ordered by Allah to obey him and refrain from sin. Yet I do not know if I have fulfilled the requirements of his commands and prohibitions. How can I be happy? Celebrating on Eid befits those who have no concern for the Akira. The audience of fear not and grieve not and the verse La taqafu wa la tahzanu fear not and grieve not. Hatim ibn al-Asam alayhi rahma used to say, fear and sorrow will be no more for those who feared sin and sank in sorrow in the worldly life. It is for them, la taqafu wa la tahzanu, Hatim ibn al-Asam says. It will be no more, no more fear and sorrow for those who feared sin and sank in sorrow in the worldly life. That then leaves those who committed sin, expressed no remorse, were blissful and walked with a strut. They will not be of those who will not fear nor display sorrow. Muad ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu would say, it is not appropriate for one to express joy until he passes over the Sirat, the bridge. The Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, says, Whenever Jibreel السلام, appeared before me, he looked terrified and shook in awe of Allah. Wahhab ibn Munabbih Rahma says, Allah made Ibrahim alayhi salam his friend his Khalil because Ibrahim feared him considerably. This resulted in people hearing his heartbeat, heartbeat from afar. Musa ibn Mas'ud rahimahullah would say, Sufyan al-Thawri's dread and weeping and wailing when we sat with him would make us feel as though we were surrounded by fire. Fudail ibn Iyav, Fudail ibn Iyav, Ali Rahma, would say, There even exists those servants of Allah whose hearts become scattered only to unite afterwards upon remembering the magnificence of their Rabb. This process would repeat itself, repeat itself until they passed away. 
For they would say that the fear of Allah in a person is according to his level of marifat and recognition of Allah. Fudail ibn Ayyad says that the fear of Allah, kawfi ilahi, in a person is according to his level of marifat and recognition of Allah. Kawf ba qadri marifa. Ibrahim ibn al Haris ali rahma would not raise his gaze towards the heavens in fear and shame as the heavens are the direction and the Qibla of Dua. It has been reported that on occasions, fear would overcome Sufyan al-Thawri, Malik ibn Dinar, and Fudail ibn Iyaz, alayhim rahma in such a fashion that they would begin walking, walking without knowing in what direction they were heading. The reality of fear Imran ibn al Hussein radiallahu anhu would, in the state of fear, say, By Allah, I wish to be turned into ashes, and the wind blows me away with force. This is a, a Sahabi of the Prophet, وسلم, Imran ibn al Hussein. In the state of fear, he would say, By Allah, I wish to be turned into ashes, and the wind blows me away with force. Ishaq ibn Kalf used to say, Fear does not mean that man sits crying and wiping his tears. True fear is that a person abandons those actions regarding which he fears punishment. Hassan al-Basri would say, As I read, Every soul shall taste of death. Repeatedly, a caller called out, when he was reading that verse, Hassan al-Basri, reading the verse, Kullu nafsin dha'ikatul maut. A call, a call out. For how long, how long will you repeat this verse? You have killed 4,000 jinn by reciting this verse repeatedly. 4,000 have already gone. When they heard this verse in awe of Allah, they could not raise their gaze to the heavens and their bodies became cold there and then. Fudail ibn Iyad Ali Rahma spent the day of Arafah in the plain of Arafah holding his blessed beard till sunset and lamenting because of the blessings of Hajj. Even though my sins have been erased, I still have regret and remorse over it. Whenever Hamad ibn Zayd Ali Rahma would sit, he would always squat, crouch down very low and sit on the heels and would not sit comfortably. When asked about this, he replied, only that person who is unconcerned about the punishment from his Lord can sit comfortably. Not for one moment am I assured that Allah's punishment will not descend upon me. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, that famous pious caliph. Ali Rahma would say, were it not for Allah's greatness, the entire creation would have perished because of his fear. Allah has shown the truth to all those who have eyes, those with eyes. Malik ibn Dinar's state of fear, Ali Rahma, was such that he would say, I have made a firm intention to instruct my family that when I die, when I, Malik ibn Dinar, die, place me in the grave, bound in chains and irons, reminiscent to the treatment handed out to the blameworthy slave who was absconded from his master. Now you people tell me that, after becoming deserving of hell and ruin, with what face do you give yourself hope of entering Jannah and deriving pleasure from the huris and palaces therein? Fudail ibn Iyad Ali Rahma would say, By Allah, neither do I envy any sent prophet, nor an intimate angel, since they will all experience the trepidation of the day of Qiyamah and will be affected by it according to their status. But I envy those who have not been born as yet, as they have no connection whatsoever with the unease, uneasiness of the Akira. I too wish that I would 
would not have to involve myself in the trepidation and trials of the day of Qiyamah. Sufyan ibn Uyayna alayhi says, a person should be such that he is from the extremely esteemed people in the eyes of Allah, but the most inferior in the creation in his own eyes, and of an intermediate level in the eyes of the creation. In summary, a person's behavior should be such that he does not disobey Allah at all, resulting in his status before Allah elevating, elevating, whilst at the same time considering himself the most inferior from the creation. His behavior towards others should be such that they do not label him corrupt, nor should he strive for them to say he is good, he is good. Farqad As-Sanji Rahma would say, 500 virgin girls entered Baytul Muqaddas. An alim from the people of the book, the Ahlul Kitab. An alim from the Ahlul Kitab there related some stories of the Akira to them, which resulted in all of them dying at the same time. They had abandoned the world. They wore sackcloth, a feature of the Zahid at the time. The state of Atar, a Salami's fear. Atar, a Salami, Ali Rahma, would supplicate in this manner, Ya Allah, I request you to forgive and excuse me. He would not have the courage to beseech, Ya Allah, enter me into Jannah. He would feel ashamed to do so because of his deeds. Farqad As-Sanji, Ali Rahma says, we once visited Atar and found him lying down with his cheek touching the ground in the sun. Upon observing him closely, we saw an uninterrupted trail on his cheek formed by tears. They had just rolled down and settled, thus becoming mud and dirt and meeting the ground. His habit was to wipe off and scatter the tears hither and thither so that people would assume that it was a trail of water used in wudu and not tears. We became aware that he hadn't raised his gaze towards the sky for 40 years. He once inadvertently looked towards the sky and then collapsed on his stomach. This fall consequently tore something in his stomach. He fell ill as a result and died in this illness. When someone from his city faced an affliction, he would say, it is a burden due to my sins. Had I left this place, this affliction would not have descended upon these poor souls. He would at night time pass his hands over his body, pass his hands over his body, lest it had been deformed as a consequence of his sins. He would say, we were once traveling with Utbah al-Alam, al -Alam, al -Alam. We reached a particular point, and upon seeing it, he fell unconscious to the ground. Upon regaining consciousness, he said, this is the place where I disobeyed Allah before reaching the age of maturity. This happened when he and his murids had already performed Isha and Fajr prayer with the same wudu for 40 years. Their bodies had frailed, and the color of their skin had changed. They had become like watermelon peels. From this, one can envisage the level of fear they had. Some of our salaf would lose consciousness weeping, whilst others would weep as though they were crying upon a dead body before drawing their last breath in that stage. Help, help, ya Allah. An Arif, a devout Arif once said, if I were to become aware of someone who has remained steadfast and they believe that Allah is one for 50 years and a wall comes in between us and thereafter he dies, I would not be able to testify regarding his tawheed with conviction as I do not know what transformations have taken place in his life. Imam Abu Muhammad As-Sahal Ali Rahma would say, the voracious, the siddiqeen, the truthful ones, constantly worry about a bad debt. 
and fear becoming distant from Allah. Allah has praised this type, stating, وَقُلُوبُهُمْ wajila." Their hearts are full of fear. He would also say, just as one fears punishment of his sins, if he does not also fear his good deeds of not being accepted, then his fear is not true. He once said, the pinnacle of fear is that one, fear of one fears Allah. The pinnacle of fear is that one fears Allah's eternal knowledge. One has fear of Allah's eternal knowledge in regards to oneself. And that he does not engage in any act that is not in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The ill effects of which can take him close to kufr. He also said, fearing the eternal judgment is the balance of tasbih and glorification. Remove, O oh my Lord, from the heart's slate the imprint of falsehood. A devout person once said, if martyrdom was destined at the door of the house and death on Islam at the door of the room, then I would prefer death upon martyrdom. A saintly person once said, if shahadat, martyrdom was destined at the door of the house and death on Islam at the door of the room, then I would prefer death upon martyrdom. When asked why, he replied, I do not know what will happen in the time it takes to travel from the door of the house to the door of the room and a change in belief and tawheed can occur in that time. Suhair ibn Naim reports, My biggest fear and concern is not my sins. A bigger fear than the burden of sin is that of my belief in the oneness of Allah. The danger of dying on anything but Tawheed. Ibn al-Mubarak, Abdullah ibn al-Mubarak, Ali Rahman narrates from Abu Lahia and he from Abu Bakr ibn Sawada who says, A man led a life in solitude. He remained as such wherever he went. Sayyiduna Abu Darda radiallahu anhu approached him and asked, By Allah tell me why you have isolated yourself from others. He replied to Abu Darda radiallahu anhu, I fear for my iman lest it is seized from me and I am not even aware of it. Sayyiduna Abu Darda radiallahu anhu asked, do you see hundred people in your tribe who have the same fear as yourself? He eventually whittled it down to just ten names. Ten names. The narrator says, I reported this incident to someone from Sham who said, this story, this story is pertaining to none other than Shurahbil, Shurahbil ibn Samt, who is from the Sahaba of the Messenger of Allah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sayyiduna Abu Darda radiallahu anhu would say on oath that person who does not fear for his iman being seized at the time of death has already had it seized from him. That person who does not fear of his iman being seized at the time of death has already had it seized from him. One of our learned ulama says, one who is given Tawheed has gained everything. And the one who is deprived from it has been deprived of every blessing. This is because with Tawheed in his heart, the blessings within it will also be complete and not partial. The worry of Sufyan al-Thawri alayhi rahmah, at the time of death, at the, as the time of death dawned upon the great Sufyan al-Thawri alayhi rahmah, he began to weep. He was asked, O oh Abu Abdullah, which is the Kunni of Sufyan, you should have hope. You should have hope. As Allah's attribute of forgiven is greater. His attribute of forgiven is greater than sins. He said, Am I weeping due to my sins? If I knew with conviction that I will die on Tawheed, then it wouldn't bother me 
even if I were to meet my Lord with sins equivalent to the size of mountains, it wouldn't bother me had I known that I would die with Tawheed. He wants Sufyan Thawri. Ali Rama once picked up a seed from the ground and he remarked, My sins are lighter than this. My fate being seized at the time of death is my only fear. May Allah have mercy on him. Sufyan Thawri was from amongst the fearful servants of Allah. He would urinate blood due to his immense fear and constantly remained ill as a result. His urine was placed before someone from the people of the book, the Ahlul Kitab, who remarked, they said, no, no, this urine, wow, this belongs to some monk. Sufyan Athauri would say to Hamad ibn Salama, O Abu Salama, will someone like me be also forgiven? Will someone like me also be pardoned? Hamad ibn Salama, radiyal rahimahullah, would say, yes, I have hope of that. One alim says, if I were to know with full conviction that I am going to experience a virtuous death, then this very matter is more beloved to me than all those things upon which the sun has risen in my lifetime. I would at that time give in charity everything I own. A will of a sadiq, a saint narrates, the st a truthful seeker, who feared Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a great deal. He made a will to his brother, to his brothers before his death. Sit at my head when death comes near me. Concentrate on me when the moment of my death arrives. Take all my belongings, almonds and sugar, and distribute them among the children of the city, saying that this is a happy moment of someone departing this abode. Should you witness me dying on Tawheed? Say this is a happy moment of someone departing this abode. Should you witness me dying on Tawheed? But if you see me die on a state other than Tawheed, then inform the people that I have not died on Tawheed so to ensure they are not deceived into attending my janazah. Then those who happily attend may do so. I don't want to be associated with pretension that I have misled Muslims. His companion asked, how will I determine whether you have died on Tawheed or not? He thus related a few anecdotes about those who died on it and signs to look for, signs to look for. The narrator says, I sat at his head looking out for the signs. I witnessed the signs of a good death and one on Tawheed, and his soul was extracted in the state of Tawheed. I then fulfilled his instructions, but related this incident only to the few close associates of mine. So, whatever sin a person constantly engages in during his lifetime is brought before his eyes at the time of death. He witnesses this bad habit in the final moments of his life. Allah forbid if the soul inclines towards it and the heart engages in its thought, then this will be deemed as his very last action, even though it may be short-lived. His end will be determined by that action. And that person who will have committed deeds of a noble nature will remember them when at death's door and will witness them. If his heart sets on them or he has a liking for them and pays attention towards them, then this will be deemed as his last action. This is a good death, an end. Some saints have commentated on the verse, He created life and death that he may put you to a test by saying that Allah Ta'ala tests his servants in his life through the thought of sin by alerting the state of the heart and at the time of death through relinquishing one's Tawheed. The person whose soul departs on Tawheed will have navigated all trials successfully. He is a mu'min and this sort of trial is wholesome just as Allah Ta'ala states. Li 
liyubli al mu'minina minhu bala'an hasana and so my dear respected audience this is the muqaddama of hazrat sheikh maulana, hazrat maulana yusuf mutala and in the end he says the consequence of not having fear and aborting fear they say that when allah grants someone his marifat he does not seize it should he fail to act upon it it remains by him so as to hold him accountable in accordance to its measure for sure its blessings are terminated sure its blessings are terminated and further rewards are discontinued condemned by allah ta'ala is one who he initially puts on the trial but then upon receiving rewards and bounties he begins to boast about the reward he forgets previous errors and is undaunted by the thought of previous uncomfortable situations revisiting him allah ta'ala states wala in adaknahu na'ma ba'da dharra amassathu la yaqulanna dhahaba as-sayyatu anni innahu la farihun fakhur and if we were to cause him to taste a favor after adversity had touched him he is sure to say allah he is sure to, he is sure to say all evil has departed from me most surely he is boasting exulting to this end the issue of debt is a far more worrying and anxious matter than anything else to keep alive this concept and that what was the state of allah ta'ala's beloved servants during their final moments in what state did they meet their lord and the circumstances surrounding their deaths are all compiled in this book throughout this book you will gain some realization of allah's close servants their of their state during their last breaths and the ability to prepare ourselves for that moment will be gained allah willing may allah ta'ala with the bless with favor us with the blessings of a good that i mean sheikh yusuf mutala maddadillahul ali and so with that hazra begins his book of the in urdu it is called buzurgo ke wisal ke ahwal final moments of the pious and he starts his book with the final moments of the leader of all the pious people that is the final moments of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam his last days his final moments and his state of illness he will begin his book with that with the greatest of all the souls that have ever been created tomorrow inshallah subhanallah wa bihamdihi subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruk wa natubu ilaik subhana rabbika rabbil izati amma yasifun assalamun alal mursalin walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin social expectation trans us all inside what you have should be what i want cuz what i have just saying all right